And thanks for staying with us this morning on The Breakfast. It's time for us to go through the pages of the National Dailies. We call it uh, Off the Press. Zika Onyan took uh, joins us this morning. Uh, thank you so much, Zika, for being part of the show. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. All right, then. We'll, we'll take a look at the Nation newspaper and let's find out what's making the rounds on the Nation Tunibu, I am not seeking office on religious grounds. Uh, that's the first or bold story you find here. APC presidential candidate meets Khan. Christian body presents charter of demands. These are the riders. Drunk soldier kills general in Lagos. United Kingdom urged to intervene in Kanu's trial. World Bank OKs 13.5 million dollars financing plan for Nigeria. Buhari approves 134.7 billion for military veterans. And just before we move away from the nation, tribunal compels INEC to release a delicate certificate. United Kingdom government launches $100 million scheme to lift women. Quite interesting. Rivers won't vote for president along party lines, says Wike. And I'm asking, should we be, you know, should he, should he decide uh, what individuals, I mean, they have a right to vote, whoever they want to vote, they have a right to be, to belong to any political party. And so what exactly does this mean? Federal government insists on no work, no pay for ASU members. Security operatives takes over Ekiti Assembly and court rejects. Mina's bill application. Uh, that's it. You have uh, uh, been it the paper this morning. Well, let's move away from the nation and quickly look at the Punch newspaper. The Punch says, Muslim, Muslim ticket. Friends criticizing me lobbied for vice president slot. That's what Tunibu is quoted to say. Wow. Interesting. And who could this be? Tunibu meets Khan says he did not Islamize his friend, family and cannot do such to Nigeria. But if that's the case, one would expect that there should be a balance in the ticket. And so if you're Muslim, then you expect... It's, it's just a moral question. Nigeria needs religious... Or Nigeria needs religiously neutral state, not religious state. Association advises the federal government... Next president must ensure good balance between Muslim and Christians. That's what the association is saying. Away from the bold headline this morning, federal government asked to begin fresh showdown. Minister tackles lecturers. Naira redesigned targets looted funds, EFCC chairs saying. Government planning bank guarantees for Nigeria and Ethiopian deal. How delays... Costly court process for straight families' access to disease savings. And another says, surrender mandate if APC loses party, tells Buhari. I take that again. Surrender mandate if APC loses party, tells Buhari. 11 court is nabbed for terrorizing Lagos neighborhood. And APC, are you disagree over bid to win Lagos? And that's it this morning on the punch. Uh, we quickly move away from the punch now. And let's uh, take a quick look at the leadership newspaper. The leadership says, Muslim Muslim ticket can soften stands, present demands to Tunubu, wants equal rights for all religion. Self-actualization for all ethnic groups says no to open grazing. I will form government of national unity. Atiku is also saying uh, probably might just be dominating all of the papers this morning. Muslim, Muslim ticket. Are you boast PDP will win Lagos 24 other states? Naira redesigned my crash dollar to 200 Naira. That's uh, what the EFCC chairman is saying. I mean, this is really a statement of fact. I mean, how can these things be? Because we understand the demand for the dollar. The reason why you have uh, the dollar being uh, on the high and while the Naira seem to be depreciating. 
Just away from that, East West Road Communities Command and DDC. Wike to Shomole, I'm sorry for supporting Obasiki's re election. <laughs> no work, no pay policy has come to stay, federal government tells ASU. But what happens to what the federal government had said prior to now? You know, to us is saying, hey, it's a fine. We're going to, you know, get to all of that agreement. If there's an actual agreement, why did the federal government compromise that stand and decided to get into another agreement saying, hey, you need to call off the strike. And now we will pay you X, Y, Z. But that's not the case. The Guardian newspaper says CSO six sanctions against underage voting, duplication in INEC register. And that's also another issue that's stopping the charts, you know, of recent. We've seen several display of... Um, children, uh, pictures from voter registration. But I think it's something that all hands should be on deck. Development not surprising. Erring staff will be sanctioned. That's what INEX is saying. Don't make Nigeria a problem for West Africa. Electoral reform chair warns politicians. 2023 poll tests of Nigerians' democratic threat. Let's see how all of that pans out underneath the bold caption. Article 4, APC's lopsided appointment and says PDP will form government of national unity. <laughs> this and this ongoing. Well, gunmen slay nine family members in Plateau and two Nigerian athletes face 10-year jail term in the United States for wire and mail fraud, what we call wire wire, you know, in the local panels. That's Yahoo Yahoo. And uh, gunmen slay nine families, I think we took that already, declining sperm count increases human extension concern. Well, that's a health conversation. Federal government asked to face off uh, government won't pay for services not rendered, minister insists. Finally, Tunibu meets Khan, at least same fit ticket fears. And uh, you have crisis loom in a kitty house of assembly 24 hours after election of new speaker, uh, well, that's the much we can take this morning. On uh, the Guardian newspaper, we quickly turn our attention now uh, to our guest, Zika Unyaito. Thank you for joining us this morning. Utwekong. For having me. <laughs> All right, let's start off with the Nation. The Nation newspaper talks about uh, Tunubu. And he says he's not seeking office on religious grounds. But how does that make sense, especially when he's, um, you know, running on a Muslim Muslim ticket? You know, I, I can I can say this authoritatively because I'm in a quiet bomb, and in a quiet bomb, the politics runs largely around the churches and religion, and there's been a lot of discussions and. Um, a lot of things that are not being said. And if these things be true, then I think that um, Tinubu has a lot of work to do to be able to get the real Christian um, vote. For instance, there is a very serious, loud rumor or speculation that to be a member of um, IOC, the International um, um, the Islamic uh, uh, IOC, IOC International, no, 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 not IOC. Uh, how, how do I get this mixed up? Now, being a member of that Islamic body, that you need to contribute constantly for a period of 10 years. Once you do that, you automatically become a full member of that body, you know? And um, that under President Buhari, they've done eight years that any Muslim that comes in um, and does that for another two years, then Nigeria will become a full member. I do not know how this is true or false, but it is resonating with the people like wildfire. So, um, I, 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 and as a result, um, the Christians within the Southern Bloc or the South, South, Southeast, just don't want to hear that. That's why they wanted a Christian to break that, you know, uh, remaining two years so as to make it 10 years. Now, this could be rumor, this could be fact. Somebody needs to come out and address that issue, and that person should be Tinubu. If it's a lie, 
let him come out and say, one, it is true, but I give this undertaking that Nigeria will not contribute to it so that the two years will not uh, make it the 10, which is mandatory. If he can do that openly, if it's a fact, or he comes out and says, it's a lie. Don't let anybody lie to you, deceive you. It is not true so that you don't have this anti-Muslim sentiment because no Christian, none, wants to be in Nigeria that has become an Islamic state. Okay? So that is one of the real raging issues under the carpet in a place like Akwaibom State, and that issue should be addressed fundamentally or frontally. It either is a fact and then give us your undertaking openly that you will not do that. Or it is a lie and come out and dispel the rumor so that we can now look at you from a completely different um, you know, perspective. Religion is a very important thing. In, in fact, it's the most important thing to everybody. Faith, for me, is the most important thing. And um, while you are allowed to practice your faith, which I subscribe to 100%, I don't want a situation where for any reason whatsoever we come across a state policy that makes it difficult for me to practice my faith. I think that Alaji Tinubu should look at that point I've just raised and address it frontally. If it is a lie, come out and tell Nigerians that that rumor is unfounded, it is not true, bring out facts and data and details and then dispel the rumor. It will make his um, work easier. But if that rumor gets spread faster, trust me, even the Southwest, it will have problems. But South, South, Southeast, definitely it will have problems because no Christian wants to be subjected to a Muslim state in this country. But, but, but I mean, uh, the, the issue is very controversial and it's also dicey as well. If you look at it, if we say that... Um, that's, you know, really not the case of if you have the APC arguing that that's not the case. Because we're at a time where uh, we can ignore the fact that religion seemed to play a major role. A ethnic city or tribe, however you want to put it, seemed to uh, play a major role in our elections. And we haven't been uh, more divided than any other time or more religious, uh, you know, uh, conscious than any other time than now and so wouldn't he have been wouldn't it have been possible for the apc to understand you know the times that nigerians are in and then to decide to have uh, a muslim christian ticket you know to these people you know i've been in politics for a long time but um i operate as a, a professional that's why i've never accepted any appointment in my life but, but I can't afford the luxury of staying out of politics because I know how important politics is. You see, the mindset of a politician, the way he's wired, first, you know, that's why I really love the current Electoral Act. I love it. But before now, our electoral system has been such that, you know, you can get away with a lot of things, a whole lot of things. And I think that that was the mindset of um, uh, Mr. Tinubu because... I mean, he could easily have met Shetima and maybe the, 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 the DG of his campaign, where he would bring the weight of his capacity to bear in the north to get the vote, while getting a southern or a, a Christian pres um, vice president. He could have done that. That arrogance, in my, in my opinion, of... of, of um, dismissing Christians with a wave of the hand, it still hurts me till today. I'm not, I'm not a member of the APC, but I, I just think that Nigerians should learn to have some level of, of sensitivity to the other faith. There are certain things you will do as a Christian, and I will say it's not right. You can't do that because that guy is a Muslim. No, you can't do that to him. You must bring about fairness, you must bring about justice, you must bring about equity. You must acknowledge the right of the other person to be here. And in Nigeria, for instance, it's like a 50-50 stuff. So you can't just dismiss a 50% population with a wave of that. That's arrogance. For me, I think that's, that's extremely insensitive. 
Now, he's got to work on the double to tell us that he had a better excuse. You can't tell me the whole of federal of Nigeria, you don't have... Look, it's either you want to win election or you want to run an effective administration. If your primary aim is to win election, somebody says, oh, if you don't win the election, how can you run an effective administration? You know, that is one mistake that people make. What makes you think that you cannot win an election? Now, why must Shetima be my deputy? It's because he has electoral value in the north. Okay, can't I play on that? Can everybody, are you telling me that he's the only exclusive northerner that has that capacity? You can discuss with him, you can share with him, you can negotiate with him and put him on that pedestal where he's able to use his words. Yes, he does have reasonable influence because when you look at the politics of the North, the politics of the North is not as straightforward as some of these people think. Because take it or leave it, you have major principalities in the North. Take it or leave it, you have Alaji Kwankwaso in the North. You can't dismiss that guy with a wave of the hand, you can't. You have Atiku Abubakar. He's from the north as well. Okay? And you have young people in the north, in the current dispensation. You have young people, and these young people, are the message of Mr. Peter B is resonating with them. For you to dismiss the enlightened young people and think that, oh, they, will, they, they don't amount to anything, is for you to, I don't even know the word to use. And these young people, I have a lot of them, you know, I was given an award by the, 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 19, the youth of the 19 Northern States. And that shows the extent to which I, I network with them. Having been the, 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 the Pioneer National Chairman of Young Democratic Party, I had a spread across the North. I still have them as my friends. Yerima Shetima, Yerima Shetima, no, no, Yerima Shetima is the Vice President. Yerima, what's his uh, surname now? He, he, he was he was he was my, my deputy my de, uh, deputy national chairman you know and we've worked together there's a whole lot of northern youth who before now were not interested but now the enlightened ones are interested so they are a block that peter obi has you know moved into as a result all right you can't say that unless you have one man you cannot go far so okay, yeah, I took, uh, let's quickly look at uh, the Nation newspaper again before we move away and look Shetima at all the headlines. Yerima, Shetima Yerima. <laughs> yes. All right. So um, on the Nation newspaper, quickly, Rivers won't vote for president along uh, party line, says Wike. That's on the one hand. I mean, should this not be uh, the decision of those who are from River State? Sh should the governor be deciding this? Does he have a monopoly of uh, uh, choice in terms of who the people would vote for? Another is that um, he also, I mean, it's stated that party affiliation, ethnic uh, party or whatever and religion will not determine the elections. I mean, how true is that? Because we're also talking about the issue of religion and the fact that some people are not very pleased, uh, you know, with uh, how things actually has panned out, especially with a ruling party having the Muslim Muslim tickets. So I, I'd like you to answer this, you know, twin one question. Yeah. The very first thing is that, look, when, when my governor, um, 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 Mr. Udo Emanuel, picked what they call the preferred successor, and people were splitting their hairs. I said, why would you do that? The man has his fundamental right to his decision. You also have your fundamental right to vote. On that day, the governor is not going to hold your thumb and tell you where to put. No, he's not going to do that. But he has a right to say, I prefer this person. Now, Wike has a right to make any statement he wants to make we're not going to vote along party lines. We're not going to do this. We're going to do this. It is left to his people to what extent he's been able to um, cut their, their confidence so that if he says go left, they go. If he says go right, they go. You can't blame him if he has come to a point of being able to cut the people to the end that they are able to go to whichever direction that he pleases. Now, my governor chose a preferred candidate. How well he's doing, the jury is out there. So you are liberty to make any statement as a leader. 
but be careful to ensure that whatever that you say, you have laid the foundation for your people to come along. And the time is no longer when you can take the people for granted and just think, go here. They No, 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 no. People have learned to say, person, not party. So they look at you. I think that this man is being very smart. You know, Mr. Wicke, I've taken time to study Mr. Wicke very well. And he, he's not just talking. He tries to match his words with some level of action. Political, I, 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 would, I would not like to use the word sagacity. Because, you know, some things are, are like, um, like the evil genius. You could be genius, but the question is in which direction. But one thing is definite. Wicke has been able to have a certain level of control over his people partially on account of how well he's performed. I'll, 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 I'll give him, you know... But, but is it can hear it Let, Let's take this a bit further. Don't you think that that yeah. contradicts uh, the fundamental human rights of the people of River no, State? No, it doesn't. It, it, I mean, the state, because that. you said the people would not vote, uh, you know, uh, towards party lines. But everyone has a right that to is, uh, association. And so... State. That is his statement. Look, I can sit down here and say, look... I am going to get a minimum of 80%, 70%, 60% of the votes of Akwai Bomb State. That's my statement of intention. Okay? When the result is announced, you will now know whether I was talking it out of malaria dream or I had laid a foundation. One thing I don't want him to do is to gag the people or to make life miserable for the others. No. But if he can persuade his people, which is what politics is all about, politics is supposed to be persuasion. Like what I'm doing, why would I have the boldness, the audacity, the mendacity to take on APC and PDP in a quiet moment? It's because I believe I've come with a superior, you know, persuasion for the people to listen. And please ask the people of quiet moment state what is going on down here. What I'm trying to say is bring on your persuasion to the people. Bring on your A game to the people and let them decide. But you must allow the people the latitude to decide. That is what I will not accept anybody compromising for any reason in the world. But you are at liberty to make your statement. And then, and part of that is political intimidation, which there's nothing wrong with it. Saying, look, I'm going to beat you hands down. Don't bother about this side. You can't say anything. It could be grandstanding. A lot of times, you can even drive fear into the people, but you've done nothing wrong. You've bent the, the law, but you've not broken it. So I don't think there's anything wrong in what he said. It will be wrong the day he stops people from exercising their franchise, you know, uh, freely and willingly. Well, uh, let's uh, see the uh, punch newspaper this morning. Abdul Rashid. Uh, Bauer is speaking. He's saying that the redesign of the Naira is meant for those who looted. I mean, should he not be in prison? You know... Oh, Ezekiel. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Can I've you... said this on... Yes, I've said this on this program before, and it is not rocket science. If you have dollar, be careful. In January, it's going to crash and crash and crash. I don't need, you don't, this is not rocket science. It's simple. People who had money that they have stored away are rushing to buy dollars because taking those monies to the bank is a problem. So these people are going to have dollars. A dollar, as of now, is about 80 um, uh, naira. Okay? Am I right? A dollar, about 80 naira, yes. Now, a hundred dollar bill is about 80,000 naira. A hundred dollar bill is about 80,000 naira. No politician will give a voter a hundred dollar bill. None. None. In vote buying or anything. And they need Naira. 
So when they bring their dollars out and central bank has control over the Naira and they are bringing it out, they are going to find somebody rather than rather than me give one person, you know, um, 80,000 80, 80, Naira. I would rather pay 20,000 20, Naira. And how do I get the Naira? I'm going to get my dollar at whatever price. And like EFCC man said, it could drop as low as 200 Naira in January. That is a fact. But, but um, I, I don't know if we should further talk about the facts. If you look at the reason why we have um, the dollar in demand against the Naira, even when uh, the official exchange rate is the Naira, it's because of the fact that um, production, we, we seem to be importing more. There's less of no, value no, that's no, added. For period, and secondly... For this, period, no, for this period, it's a completely different game that is on. So now. how sustainable would this be? So how long can it, we sustain that before no, there's the demand? Because... It's not about being sustainable. Just, just, just to get the mindset. Naira is going to be moved from circulation, completely moved, and controlled by central bank, completely moved. People have stored up billions of naira in their houses. They want, they don't want to lose out, so they want to get and the fastest way. And you know, look, this is a little more complicated. People, people need to understand what is going on. When you take a certain amount of money to the bank, depending on how your account has been, which is why I warn some of my friends, don't collect this money and go to the bank. EFCC is going to invite you. Because after a certain amount of money, EFCC will call you to come account for this money. So these people cannot afford the luxury of taking this money to the banks. They are starting to use the money to buy dollar. That is why if you look at in the past, it was just moving from maybe 500 to 650 to 550, you know. But in recent times, it moved like boom, 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 you know, like 200 naira difference in a short time. That is not production, whatever. No, it is the policy now. So it's going to get worse because when the new notes actually start to come out, people are not go going to be in a hurry to collect the old notes. So all these old notes that you've had, you are going to use it to buy dollars. So during this period, dollar could actually hit a thousand and more as soon as the new notes come out. But when you reach halfway after December, people are not going to collect your old notes again. And you are going to have a problem. You have dollars. But is it now, to... now, no, let me just end on this. Now you are entering election period where you are going to spend the dollars. Remember where the problem started? Primaries. Now the second problem is election. So these people are going to need Naira like no man's business. As a result, they will give away their dollars for anything. And once the election is over and that Naira has come down, we are going to have a relative, you know, balancing of that Naira. It will come down to as low as 300, I don't know, 200. But it could go up again and then maybe stabilize at that between 400 and 500. That's what I know the Naira is going to be. So anybody who is hoarding dollars now is going to get really hurt. You buy it at 800, you go and sell it at 400. That's bad market. You've lost half your money. E Ezekiel, so um, all of these dynamics might be understood because of, you know, the principle of demand and supply. But it also does not change the fact that um, this is artificial. And the question is, how, how long will that be before we get back, you know? Because it's about value. What exactly are we, what value are we adding? We're a very yeah. uh, dependent economy. We import almost everything we consume. Almost yeah. everything. And so the demand yeah. for the dollar would continue to increase until we fix the economy. It's just simple, you know, economics and mathematics. So this might it suffer depends. for a while. But how about uh, also, if, if you also look at it, there's also the fever of Jackma. And that's also on the high. There's need for dollars yeah. as well. So, uh, so, 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 so for how long will we say that um, we can sustain or you have the, the, dollar, uh, the, 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 the naira appreciating over the dollar? It, it won't be for two long. Things. Yes, two things. Number one is that PDP was in power for 16 years. We had the same problem. Why did the dollar exchange for about less than 200 naira? 16 years. Now, 
we moved from less than 200 naira to 800 naira in eight years. What has changed? When you study what has changed, it means that it can come back to its real value, what has been, and then whoever comes in can inspire confidence in people to be able to have a stabilized economy. For instance, if Peter Obi comes in and he brings the rhetoric, let me use that word, you know, in a very enlightened sense of moving from a consumption economy to a production economy. There's something that, um, well, time will not permit, but it is doable. That is why something I came up in a quiet room said, which is social governance ideology, it brings people down where we abolish PAs and political PAs and ACs and everything and rather have what we call CEOs. Instead of bringing a guy, you are paying him 200000 every month for doing nothing, you bring them and train them and give them vocational skills and if possible, guarantee them, you know, two million, you know, and let them start, not MSMEs. They will start to do little productions, move concentration from political, you know, PAs and ACs and everything to people becoming CEOs. It's a little thing, mindset difference. A man that you guarantee two million at the beginning to do business, in four years, he's become a big man. A man that you pay 250,000 naira every month for doing nothing in in four years, you have paid that person 12 million doing nothing, whereas you could guarantee 2 million and bring a productive sector. It's just about the new set of people coming into the realm of governance, how they think. If we have a man that thinks in terms of MSMEs and really sitting on them, we can become a production economy in little or no time. So it's not just rhetoric, it's something that can be done. It is what I intend to do in Acquire Bombstead, and it is what is giving me, you know, the age I'm having now because. There's a definite plan of action on what to do. And the youths are starting to see that, wow, this makes sense. Well, so uh, just on the other side of the question that I asked, uh, which you didn't answer, and I'm going to bring it back to you. Abdul Rashid Bauer is speaking, and we know that he sh should be in prison following uh, you know, disobedience of court order, even though that hasn't really sat well with a lot of persons saying there might be double standard. But really, he, he, is he speaking from prison or where exactly is he speaking from? Well, I, I did see, um, he, number one, immediately that was said, he was supposed to be said to prison. He said that the two things they accused him of, he had done it. Number one, he had returned the vehicle to the owner. And number two, the money was being processed to pay back. So I think they went back to court and that, um, uh, that um, sentence was, um, was nullified. So if that be the truth, if that be the truth, then I think that um, it's been overtaken by events in the sense that if you accuse me or if you send me to prison for, for owing a particular person and you discover that I, 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 I paid back the person, then it doesn't really hold again. I'm not being punished for for what I've already been exonerated from. So I really don't know what, I don't want to speculate, I don't know what the fact is, I just know that they say that the car had been returned and that the money was being processed to be paid back to the person. So the basis on which he was being committed to prison, you know, was no longer tenable. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. At, at what point uh, now? At what point did that happen? Because it, it's outright caught disobedience. <laughs> well, let's move away from that so we don't spend too much time. Quickly on the Guardian newspaper, Zika Nyaituk, I know how you have been very positive about, you know, the Electoral Act. You have been one person that has been excited about it, and you yes. hope that it would make a difference for the 2023 elections. But on the Guardian newspaper, CSOs are seeking sanction against underage voting and duplication in INEC register. I mean, really, could, um, why are we still talking about this? We have seen... I don't know how true that is, but of course, investigation is still going on. Well, we have seen uh, uh, registered underage voters uh, appearing on different platforms, and, and, and that's quite worrisome. So could we not have the Electoral Act address all of these issues? Ezekiel? Oh, well, I'm fortunate. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we can establish contact quickly before uh, we call it a wrap this morning. I've been told that uh, 
Zico Nyaito has been disconnected, and that's on the network. Apologies right there. But a major concern for us is about our elections and the fact that, yes, we know that we're a nascent democracy, but gradually we're hoping that we get there. We get to that point where we say uh, we probably have arrived. I really don't know if, if there's anything like that, if it exists in any country in terms of democracy. But there's several issues that have truncated the democratic process. On the ridge, uh, you know, uh, register and voting is also another issue. Ezekiel Yaitu, can you hear me, please? Well, we don't have him. Ezekiel Yaitu, if you can hear me, please unmute your device. Yes, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Good. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Yeah. So I am. Um, uh, yeah, the issue of underage voting, our electoral act, and uh, our democracy. What's the future for us? Yeah, the preponderance of this is in the north. And there are certain practices in the north that um, we need to be able to reconcile. For instance, very early marriage. So that a, a, a person that is like um, um, 12 years is a wife and probably a mother. Uh, our law says you must be up to 18. But when you have a mother at the age of 15 or 16 uh, do you really call a mother a minor it, it's a major problem that we have and to that extent you could see somebody that looks young but that person is just um, you know a mother a wife and a mother on the other hand you cannot take it away that a lot of the children that you see there i mean are children i mean I mean, you could talk for the women, but how do you talk for the boys that you've seen there and they are, they are really young? And I think there's been a, a, a good abuse of that process. I think that before INEC um, published it, they should have taken a good look at certain facial recognitions. Another thing, I have I've, I've called somebody, um, I've taught somebody to be a young person only to discover that... Um, he was actually about 19 years, but he looked very young. So uh, some of these things, when you see a picture, don't be in a hurry to cast as passions yet. But I still think that there's a lot of underage, you know, registration, which would need to voting as well. And um, on that day, on the line, I don't know how we are going to be able to tell this person, no, 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 you can't vote. If you try that, your life might be at risk. So I think it's a, it's a the problem that we INEC has to sort out institutionally by getting those people off the register. But if you're expecting that the election officer, like the youth copa, is going to stop such people in the north, I think that you're going to risk the life of such a copa, and I wouldn't want to be a party to it. So let <laughs> us use every available post to, to do administrative um, sanitization. You, you said something about uh, it's very common or prevalent in the northern part of the country. And so it's the not, not part of Nigeria. And do we have different laws governing our country? It's the Constitution. What the Constitution talks about an underage, a child is a child, up until they become 18. And so are we practicing different laws? Do we have different constitution for the east, for the south, southwest, and then we have different for the northern, you know, the northeast and what have you? It, it, it calls for a lot of consent. So as a Kanyaitu, when you see a child, you will know that that's a child. So it's not possible um, that you would see a child and then you're in question whether or not that's not a child. Yes, we understand that there are issue of uh, where you have uh, dwarfism, that's, that's also another case. But you, you can actually, you could tell. It, it, it's, it's, it's a different situation. When you see a child, you will recognize that that's a child. By all means, physical feature among others. I agree with you completely. I, I, I completely agree with you. I, I think that's one of the reasons we need to really look at the restructuring and look at our law-making processes. Because some of the practices in the North are, are so peculiar to them and different from the South. How do we sit down and look at the sensitivities, even of the religions? We really need to look at this issue of restructuring from a completely different paradigm. You know, for me, it's not so much of... Um, Let's let's have our own thing and do our own thing. Not so much so, but 
how do we ensure fairness, equity, based on the ethics that we all live by? You know, the, the, a typical northern family is not exactly the same as a typical southern family. Oh, and if we are to align some of these um, differences, we need to really sit down and make sure that there's a lot of enlightenment and let the other people know that it is in their better interest. There are a lot of practices in the north that are not in their best interest. I can tell you that for a fact, okay? But we need to really look at some of those things and engage leadership that is trusted by the people. When we do that, then it becomes easier for us to run one country where everybody has respect for the rule of law, and one law does not apply in this person and then does not apply in the other person. But we have the template where every Nigerian is a Nigerian. I think along that line, we may start to blur where you come from and just know that you are a Nigerian, like in, in Rwanda. You know, when, once we start to put our Nigerianness far above our state of origin, then we'll, become, we'll begin the process of nationhood because something must bind you as a nation. Right now, religion is not binding us. Tribes and tongues are not binding us. Ethics and whatever are not binding us. We All need right, to sir. find that thing that binds us as a leader for us to become Ezekiel. a nation. Yes, please. We have to go now. No, Twekong, thank you so much for being part of the show. Uh, we, it's always a delight to listen to you and hear you share your thoughts on some of these issues. We look forward to all of that. Thanks so much and God bless you. Have a lovely day. All right. Then Ezekong Yantuk is uh, a public affairs analyst. He's also vying for uh, the governorship office in Aquabom State courtesy of the ADC. And that's the size of it. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll be diving to our first major conversation. Please stay with us.